Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the silver weekly chart crossed over the Dow 30 industrial average. And I've shown you this chart a lot here. We're not looking at it uh, based on this discrepancy we point out many times, which I personally believe is going to correct. But I want to look more from the perspective of market cap. Now, there's an article here. This is actually a fairly old article. Uh, that was on Max Kaiser's site. This gives you an idea of what I'm looking at here. Um, and this was back when Bitcoin traded down to 125, I think, and asked Mac, Max Kaiser, is silver a good hedge for a Bitcoin position? And he says, first of all, my call for Bitcoin when it was in the 40s was to trade up to 150s based on the Cypress chaos. So you can see this is back from 2013. Uh, a print of 150 was recorded this morning, followed by a reaction to the mid-120s. Many Bitcoiners are now sitting on massive gains, but because it's such a fresh concept and a brand new take on both currency and economics, finding a suitable hedge for Bitcoin is a topic completely undiscussed until now. I think silver provides a great place for some Bitcoin profits to go to give investors and miners a way to preserve wealth without reinvesting proceeds right back into the corrupt banking system. So he talks about the market cap. And his estimate here, he says the market cap of silver is approximately 29 billion. Now, I'm not going to dispute that. Uh, right now, as we look, I don't have the sites up, the crypto coin cap sites, but I think the market cap for all cryptocurrencies is about 3 billion. And we're talking about 30 billion here. And then when we're talking about the US stock market, the last figure I saw was 18 trillion. But it's probably in the high 20s or maybe even 30. We'll just say 30 trillion because the last take was taken a long time ago. So if you think about that, uh, 3 billion to 30 billion, that means that silver has about 10 times the market cap. And by the way, that's at $16 an ounce. That's saying there's roughly uh, 2 billion ounces of available silver above ground. So that's, that's a pretty good guesstimate, I would say. So we've got silver sitting around $30 billion, and we've got, we'll say, stocks just in the U.S. at 18 to $25 trillion. And I think that probably worldwide, it's not much more than that. Now, with the China thing, and let's show you the SSE here. This is uh, the Chinese stock market, the SSE composite. If you remember, I pointed out that the news never covers uh, Chinese stocks going to all-time highs. And, you can see right here, the 52-week high is 514695 and 5131. So today, the Chinese stock market hit an all-time high. Well, actually, not an all-time high, and that's interesting because it's not on the Net Dania charts, but it is here on the Yahoo charts. So you can see long-term, since the 90s, the Chinese stock markets returned about 4,000%, whereas the U.S. stock market about 550%. Uh, a much better gain. But again, I pointed out in the chart that that was a breakout from here, and that's why we're rallying. I think we'll get a breakout from there. So that's uh, what price is that? That's around um, 6,000. So really, it's not that far away for Chinese stocks to break above 6,000. When they break above 6,000, who knows how far they're going to run? They're going to run far. Let's talk about the market cap. Now, Bloomberg just reported today that the Chinese market cap hit $10 trillion. Now, as far as world stock markets, that's big because um, the U.S. is by far the leader, uh, and I'm guessing $25 trillion. Now, do you think that, that the value of U.S. stocks should be two and a half times that of Chinese stocks? I don't think so, but what do stocks represent? Do they represent the wealth of the nation? Should the stocks in China represent the manufacturing capacity in China? Um, I would say based on that, we're still way skewed. I, I would just on kind of a back of a matchbook cover analysis, I would put Chinese stocks at, as at least five times the mar they should their market cap should be five times what U.S. stocks are. So at fairly priced at current prices, that means that the Chinese stocks need to go to about 150 trillion, maybe, 
and they're at 10 trillion. So that means Chinese stocks need to go up 15 fold from here. So that would put us at about 75,000 on the Chinese stock market. I know those sound like crazy numbers, but I don't think they're going to be looking ahead when we see what happens. Now let's look at the member update page here. I just wanted to point out the latest poll results because it's kind of interesting. I, I did not think, um, and our vote was 100% silver because our gold is negligible really. But uh, I, I was surprised to see the results here. You can see first place is 90% silver, 10% gold with 23 votes. Second place is 100% silver with 21 votes. You can see we got 80% silver with 13 votes and 70%. So that's the top four, 90, 100, 80, and 70. So that seems to indicate that people are in agreement with me that silver is very, very undervalued. And if you think about those market caps, um, that makes sense because at $30 billion, silver is just a tiny, tiny fraction of the market cap of all these companies that are out there. Now, I wanted to answer some questions here. Uh, the, well, this is a comment from Silveracious, and this is the interview with James Corbett. It's kind of interesting saying the next 100 years belong to Asia. I think that's what Jimmy Rogers has said for many years now, and I happen to agree with that. I think that if you do an unbiased analysis, um, there's no question that Asia is the next, going to be the next power for a very long time. Um, now, anybody expecting an early morning raid? Yes, we're looking for that. We're going to be looking at some silver and what we want to buy. And then uh, I want to answer this question from Moss Moon. Uh, he says, BJF, is there a reason you prefer the flow LTC cross over the flow BTC? Have been following your work over on the Flow Bitcoin talk thread, we'd love to hear more of your thoughts on crypto. So let's jump over to the crypto again. And uh, first one I want to point out, this is one that I'm actually taking a position in here. And again, market cap is what you're going to be looking at. That's going to be the most accurate indicator of where you are in a coin. Because a coin can have any number of coins. You can see that this coin, Spot, and this is a coin that I've kind of adopted as my own now. I like the chart pattern on it. I like the market cap on it. And I like the number of coins. And I like the action on it. And for that reason, I've accumulated. You can see here, this is my Spot wallet. And you can see there's a million coins there. Now, you need to be very careful with these coins. Uh, I just ran into a couple of issues today. One was... Uh, one of the people who signed up for the member site uh, sent me about uh, two-thirds of a Bitcoin on my Bitcoin Vercurex account. And instead of transferring them to Cripsy as, as Bitcoin, I actually converted them to IO coin, I0 coin, because I was. it looked like there was a good uh, arbitrage that I could do. Turns out that it was a forked wallet. In other words, it was operating under an old wallet and... I was unable to to get those coins off of there. So that was a big lesson for me. The The bottom line, if you're new to this, is if you're going to buy any kind of cryptocurrency, um, once you've decided something that you want to buy and decided it's freely trading on the exchange and that you, you can buy it and sell it, you've checked the market cap, you've checked the number of coins, you've checked the action, then you've got to get that wallet, you've got to send yourself some of those coins, and then you've got to make sure that you can encrypt that wallet and then you're going to go and back up that wallet. You have to do those things. So, you know, I'm, I've got another coin that I'm investing in right now. It's called Grand Coin. I was trying to take control of that market and uh, there's a problem with the blockchain. So you have to be extremely careful. You have to do all of your research beforehand. But anyway, back to this, this Spots coin. This coin was initially designed by someone who wanted to convert cryptocurrencies to silver and gold. 
It's based on the spot price of silver and gold. And you can see it became a very unpopular coin. You can see what happened to it when it, when it was issued. Now, initially, I was I had a lot of people say, why don't you do a coin? And there's a lot of work involved with a coin. You have to have developers. You have to have uh, marketers. You have to have people who maintain multiple websites for blockchain transactions. A lot of stuff like that. I'm finding it's a lot easier to come in after the fact. And so this coin, and I'm going to give you the difference between this coin and Florin coin. Uh, so you can see here the market cap on this coin is about $5,000. Um, that's not really a hard coin to take over. And you can see at, with 1 million coins, I've already got 10% of the market cap of this coin. Now, just uh, real quick here, if you head over to and this, just for the members, <laughs> not to let the public know, but you can see this activity, um, this is mainly me and uh, some market participants, but primarily myself. You can see that I bought this coin at 100. I ran the coin all the way up to about uh, 600. You can see that the coin has corrected back down to about 165 on the bid. So there is some activity coming into the coin. Um, I'm probably break even at this point but that's really not the point you need to make the assessment. So back to that market cap, you can see the market cap on this coin is only about five grand. Now, if we look at Florin coin, um, that's gonna be a much larger market cap. And you can see that that's a $122,000 market cap on that coin. Now, I believe I have, I think I have 2 million Florin coins and you can see 88 million is the market. Um, so what do I control? 2.5% of the market? I don't control the market. Now his original question was, uh, why don't you do the flow BTC cross? Well, because it's on Poloniex and Bittrex. I don't really use those exchanges. Uh, there's a lot, I haven't done so yet. I may do so for arbitrage purposes in the future, but all my accounts are on Cripsy. I can, I can really move things fast on Cripsy and I like the two-factor authentication that's on there. So th that's why I'm using that. Now, the reason why I treat this coin differently is because this is a coin that I'm accumulating the coin. Um, I'm not interested in buying and selling the coin and making a quick profit. Um, that's a coin that I recently did with, or that's a thing I recently did with Lotto coin. This is a coin that I saw moving very rapidly and it still is, in fact. Um, I bought and sold a couple of times, doubled and tripled my profits, sunk them back into other coins. Um, so there are coins that you trade. You can see that's $154,000 market cap. It wasn't anywhere near that when I started buying it. It was a fraction of that. But that was a coin that I didn't really trust for a number of reasons. The wallet, what it's used for, Whereas Florin coin is a coin that I really believe in, so I don't have a problem with accumulating the coin. I don't have a problem with letting it fall back and buying more. So I'm not buying more right now uh, because I'm letting it build and see how strong the coin is. I truly believe in the coin. I'd like to get more of it. Now the spots coin, well, it's not gonna be very difficult to control 30, 40, or 50% of this coin. And when that happens, I really can't tell you what's going to happen because uh, I'm new to this thing. It's just kind of like a game for me. So the big factor when you're looking at these things is market cap. Um, you can basically get a list of, you can get a list of 24 hour volume. You can get a list of the coins based on market cap. You can get a list of the coins based on how they're trending. And uh, there's a lot of ways you can look at them. But the main way you're gonna look at them here is this market cap and you can see that obviously bitcoin is number one at 3.25 billion ripple which i have no confidence in because it's a pre-mined controlled coin then you've got litecoin bit shares that's stock i'm not really interested in that and dash and dogecoin so uh, together all the cryptocurrencies we're talking about maybe three and a half billion dollars still a tiny, tiny market as far as market cap is concerned. Now, talking about silver and the market cap, 
realizing that we only have about a $30 billion market cap on silver. One of the things that you want to look at, just like you're looking at any of these other markets, is you're looking for some place where you can exploit a shortage. Because obviously, if they can't sell you what's in demand, then it's going to be easy to leverage the price from there. Now, I've said before in a number of videos that I personally believe that that the junk silver is probably going to be a very vulnerable area for them when things start to take off. I don't know when that's going to be. So I did an analysis on the junk on Atmex, and there's a lot of other places you can get it, and uh, these aren't the lowest prices, but it's one of the biggest ones out there, so I figured I'd do the analysis here. Now, you know that a thousand ounce bag is about 715 ounces, so we're talking about maybe uh, 10 bags there, so maybe 7,000 ounces, then the 500 bag, so um, that's another thousand or so. So we're really only ta we're talking less than 10,000 ounces is available for this junk silver. Um, how much money is that compared to the 30 billion in silver? Um, you know, $150,000. So it's just crazy, the numbers. Um, this is going to be something I'm going to keep an eye on. I don't really need a lot, a lot of more junk silver, um, but that may be something that people want to keep an eye on who don't have it. Uh, as I said before, junk is always going to be where you start. Um, there's probably a lot of members who just jumped in and started with me buying Perth, but that's not how I started. I did not start with Perth Mint. I started with junk silver bags. And uh, then I moved, when I got too many dimes, then I moved to, you know, the half half dollar bags and, and things like that. And then once I was done with those, I started buying, this is back in 2003, started buying silver eagles. Got sick of those, started buying some maples, and eventually, you know, made my way into Perth. So being somebody who has a decent amount of junk silver, uh, it, there's a lot of things going for it. One, you've got the dollar forty nine over spot. That's very, very reasonable. You've got the liquidity of it. Any coin uh, store out there is going to be able to quote your price, buy and sell. Now, you can see there is a buy and sell. Atmax has a spread here. It's a little wide. Um, they're willing to buy it for eleven thousand three eighty two and sell it for twelve thousand five nineteen. So that's that's a pretty wide spread. That's almost a 10% spread. But um, when you're talking about the barter potential that these coins have, and we're seeing a lot of stuff now coming out about them trying to force a cashless system. Now, we know that can't really work. For one thing, I've talked about before, the billion, even actually the UN has has estimated that the world drug trade is in the trillions. So we have already a trillion dollar black market. Now anybody who has an ounce of sense knows that that money has to be laundered and that if that money is laundered it has to be going through the banks. There's no way that amount of money is going through Bitcoin or anything else. It's going through the banks. And we know it's HSBC and JP Morgan and the others. So it's highly unlikely that they will do that. But there is a chance and the chance is that they could try to stamp out organized crime. They could try to be the heroes. And if that's the case, and they decide to try to force us into a cashless system, then you're going to want to have something that is a very, very good barter uh, tool. I cannot think of anything better than junk silver. And seeing as how there is so little right now, that's definitely something I'm going to be watching. I'm not sure if I'm going to be buying any because I already have some. But for those members who haven't uh, got their base in junk yet, you might want to back track and fill in that hole if we get this smack down. Now you can see they're wanting to take it lower. Uh, it seems to be rolling over. Let's clear this off and just get the pure silver chart here. Um, they're, they're wanting to take it lower. It, it could very well bounce, but you can see we've got a pretty good uh, rounding off pattern now going in, and 
it wouldn't surprise me at all. Remember, I've always said that you want to buy when you have an absolute uh, this spike down. Um, and that's what we're looking for, a big spike down. My guess is if we get it, it's going to be very short-lived, just like this spike was. You're going to have to move very, very quickly. But that might be a chance to pick up some junk silver for maybe even 15 bucks an ounce. And that would be an incredible buy. And we'll talk to you next time.